Hi, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be making a beautiful coffee table out of pallet wood again. This is possibly one of my favorite builds so far. I think it came out really nice. But of course, nothing's ever simple and there was ups and downs along the way. But I'll show you how I overcame them and uh, ended up making up a really nice coffee table. So, so far you've seen me plane down these boards. I like to glue them up in two pieces just so I can run them back through my planer to get them all nice and flat. Just so it makes my life a little bit easier once I glue the whole board up. Making sure everything's nice and flat and getting it down to final size. Then I go around with a router just to get that nice little profile in. I think it looks really clean. Then I, I go and fill all the little holes up that the nails leave with a bunch of wood glue and sawdust. And I just come back and sand it all flat. Just so there's not big holes in the table and when you run your finger over them they're nice and smooth uh these holes they they burn just like the, the normal wood when i burn these tables so it all comes out the same now i'm just getting the stock ready for the legs i already planed them and i already glued them as you can already tell right now i'm just showing you me gluing them up i like to use as many clamps as possible just because i think it makes the glue glue up a lot more seamless and it looks a lot more nicer but uh I don't really think you need this many clamps, probably two or three would have done, but I put all the big clamps that I had on there. As you can see, I don't have a lot of clamps, and they're all a bit broken. As you can see, I'm struggling with this clamp here. But uh, we, we work with what we got, and uh, I hate these clamps because I always bang my knuckles off them and my wrists when I'm trying to screw them together. But again, work with what we got. And then I just cut them to rough size on the table saw, leaving enough material on them to be cleaned up. Now, i got to apologize for this next part. Because I lost a lot of footage, but here are the table legs. <laughs> Sorry that uh, I couldn't show you how I put it all together and built it. But uh, I tried here showing you what I basically did as best as I can. I, I, I cut a 45 degree there, and another one there. And then I glued up all these slats around here to be able to, you know, provide the structure to it. And uh, glued it all together with screws and glue. Uh, sorry I couldn't show you that, I just lost the footage. But um, now I'm just going around, filling up all the holes and imperfections. Because my planer blades on my planer were pretty dull at the time, so there was a lot of tear out and a lot of chipping, and obviously there's holes from where I screwed everything in. So I spent a hell of a long time just going around and filling up all the holes and getting all the tear out. Uh, my advice for anyone, make sure your tools are as sharp and good to use as possible before starting a project because you may talk yourself into thinking that you could just fix the issues down the line or that it won't be that bad and you'll save more time just doing it than you would changing out the blades and everything but it always comes to bite you back so just make sure everything's sharp don't be lazy with it don't be me because <laughs> i spent so much time getting all the filler in into all the perfections getting all the tear out sorted and stuff because obviously the, the tear out was very deep in a lot of places so i had to use a lot of filler and i had to keep sanding it down and reapplying the filler and sanding it back down and this stuff makes a mess when you're trying to sand it it literally goes everywhere as you can see here it will literally cake your shop up in like a millimeter thick worth of dust so everything gets ruined it all has to be cleaned and i don't have any dust collection in my shop it all just goes straight into the air uh, i don't have enough money to afford dust collection so i just have to use a sweeping brush and uh, i've still got dust all over my shed to this day and i couldn't find anything to sand here properly so i just got a metal bar and a bit of sandpaper and just hand sanded it because i couldn't do it with an orbital sander because i wanted that nice round look instead of it being really sharp and here I am just starting on the table, starting on the basic sanding. Uh, I don't sand it all the way up to 400 grit because I've got to burn the table and when you burn the table it does make it a bit more rough. So I sand it up to about 150 grit and then after I burn it I sand it the rest of the way uh, just to save a bit of time because you know we all hate sanding but you still get, still get the same effect at the end because you've got to sand after you burn it anyway to take it all down. So And don't forget all the edges. I, I don't know why when I first started doing all my woodworking project, I'd try and miss out the edges and stuff, but the side, the end grain and the side grain, they make up a lot of the look of the table. Cause you're not always looking at the table uh, from a bird's eye view. Quite often you see it from the side and when you're picking up the table to move it, you grab it from the side and you want it to feel nice and smooth and all nice. So spend some time doing that. And this was the first time me burning it. I ended up burning this table three times and uh, I ran into a big issue 
nearer towards the end of the video, which you'll see. But here I am burning it with my cheap little weed burner. Uh, this thing's just used for weeds in your garden. You're meant to burn them out, but I just use it to burn that. They're, they're only like a tenner from Amazon. So I got half the table done. It's looking nice now, but uh, I had to redo it because I, I scratched it a bunch. And yeah, it happens. I shouldn't have started it so early on. You can see here as well, it picks up a bit of a warp when you do burn it. But as long as you burn the other side, it should straighten itself out. I'm just showing you, you know, what it's like at the minute. Because it's really badly warped at the minute. A lot of people would think, oh god, I'm going to have to scrap this now. But we'll just show you what happens when you burn the other side. So I quickly burn the other side. Even though it is the underside and you're not going to see it, I still want the same effect. And I still want it to look nice. So quickly get that all burnt. And you can see it's all straightened out now. I haven't done anything else to it. I haven't clamped it flat. I literally just burnt the other side and it pulled it back. So there it is. And here I am sanding it from 150 grit all the way back up to 400. You can see there I had a, a, a dull sanding disc. So I went and got myself a new one. You see me here struggling to put it back on. I don't know why they make these sanding discs so hard to put on in the first place. <laughs> I wish I could just throw it on, but it's never like that. So here I am just starting it again. And you'll notice in the background throughout this video, a lot of my actual shed changes. That's because all the chipboard got ruined and I had to reclad the shed. So you'll see it go from chipboard to like a black plastic. I uh, just thought I'd explain that. And uh, here I am about to finish. My favourite part of any project is throwing on the finish and seeing your hard work pop out at you. And admittedly, this isn't the best shot, but you'll get another shot at the back end of the table as well. This was filmed a little bit better. I still should have set my lighting up a bit better so you could actually see what's going on. The shadows are quite distracting. I'm still learning how to do all this filming stuff. I'm fairly new to this whole YouTube scene, so yeah. And uh, what I use to finish my tables, I use a, ba a base coat of mineral oil just to really soak down deep into the wood. And then I have this uh, mixture that I make up myself. It's 50% beeswax, 50% mineral oil. That's what's in that little jar there. And I just buff that in. I usually do about three or four coats of this. I'll let it all soak in. I'll let it bake in front of the fire so it soaks deep into the wood. And then I'll apply another coat. I used to just do one coat. But I noticed uh, it it'd rub off a lot easier over time. So like... You know, the more times you touch it, the more times you wipe it and stuff, it seems to be more susceptible to liquids. So I try to do as many coats as possible, and uh, it seems to work out. So yeah. And uh, this is me just painting the table, just to double check there's no uh, marks or anything that I've missed, because it's always when I paint the table that I notice there's an imperfection, then I have to go back and resand it and everything. You can see me here trying to get some cool shots. Really didn't turn out that cool. It looks more done than anything. But yeah, I just quickly put a coat of paint on there and just threw it on just so I could see the last little bit of imperfections. And of course I found imperfections that I missed. I don't know why they pop out so much more once I painted it. So I thought I'd try beat the system this time and paint it, see what all the imperfections are before I've already sanded it up to 400 grit. And then I can go in, make all those corrections, and then I'm I'm fine, I'm sweet. So now I'm just drilling all the holes for the screws to go into the table. Uh, these screws are not really structural, they're more just to pull the table into the legs while I glue it up so the glue sticks better. And a neat little trick I've been doing lately is to get a screw bit, screw bit, a drill bit that's uh, slightly bigger than the actual screw to drill into the legs and then doing a small pilot hole into the actual table. So when I'm screwing it in, I'm not actually screwing the legs, but the legs are being pulled into the table rather than being screwed together. I th it makes for a much stronger uh, joint. I don't really know if I'm explaining this right, but basically when you've got a screw that's screwing into the table as well and screwing into the legs at the same time, they're not so much being pulled into one another, but just being joined. Uh, so by leaving the clearance in the legs and just screwing into the table, pulls it a lot tighter to the table and <clears throat> um, because I've already finished the table uh, which I shouldn't have done I had to go around and scuff all of the uh, 
stuff off and scrape it so the glue would actually bond and stick to the wood. I didn't really think about that before finishing the table. And this is what I meant by I had to scratch it all up and refinish the table anyway. So here I am drilling the pilot hole with a drill bit that's too big. So the screws didn't even uh, screw into it properly. Half of them just spun out. The other half was only holding on by a little bit. So I need to go and get a smaller drill bit for my next table. I ended up just using clamps to clamp it all down. And the screws basically would just use as plugs to hold it all in place. But lesson learned, I'll go buy a smaller drill bit for my next table. So here I am just lining it all up. You probably noticed that I had a little bit of tape around the, t the table so I knew exactly where to put it uh, so it's all nice and level and uh, look at all that squeeze out all of that wasted glue it's sad to see but I need to get myself an actual squeeze ball because pouring it straight from those big jugs is really hard and they end up using way too much glue as you can see there that's enough glue to probably glue up another two slots or something together so it's painful to watch and I'm sorry I don't I don't need any comments about it I am aware but I'll do better. I'll go buy myself a bottle to use so I use less glue. But you can see it's absolutely just pouring out. And I had to go around and soak it all up with a paper towel. And uh, I, I'd use a dry paper towel at first. And I'd go back with a wet cloth. Because the wet cloth gets rid of all of the, the glue that's there. It's really easy to clean up. And then I used a bunch of clamps just to really clamp it down. Because those screws basically did nothing. Because I drilled them too wide. But, uh, the table's strong, it's on there securely, and I'm just going around now, filling up all the last little bits of holes before I start on the actual finishing sanding of the legs. In hindsight, it would have been a lot easier just to finish sanding these legs and then attach them, and then I could just go back and clean up these last little bits before painting. Uh, but in my head, I thought, well, I'm just going to have to sand it anyway because I'm going to have to put filler in all the holes. So I'll do all the sanding at the end, but... I scratched the hell out of this tabletop when I had to flip it over and do all the sanding. So I had to re-sand and refinish the top again. So another lesson learned. Uh, that's um, it, it's just it's just hard, if you know what I mean. I haven't had that much experience building these tables yet, so I learn a little bit each time I build the table. And uh, here I am just using a roller to put on all the base coats. Uh, I did go back and use spray paint just because it's a more even finish for the end. I just wanted to get the bulk of it done with uh, this paint because it's a lot harder paint. And yeah, but the roller doesn't leave as nice a finish as when you sp as when you spray it. As you can see there, it's a bit bubbly and stuff. And I knew I was gonna have to refinish this top anyway because I got a bit of paint on it and stuff. So I went round to all the little holes and stuff that I missed and I filled it in with charcoal and super glue. Uh, I saw someone else do this and I really like the finish it gives because it sort of looks like epoxy but it's not epoxy it's it, it's just charcoal and super glue uh, and it, it, it cures really quickly I don't have to wait and I can just put it on and I went around with a lighter just to burn up the parts I sanded and uh, got a lot of smoke in my eyes and started crying so <laughs> you got to see that it was my fault really for having my face way too close to the table while I'm doing it uh, with my eyes wide open trying to get all the detail and stuff but uh, you know, you, you live and you learn. I'll either wear goggles next time or just stand a bit further back. So now I'm just refinishing the table, putting all that finish back on that I sanded off. I managed to get a little bit of a better angle while uh, finishing this table this time. Uh, it's still not the best camera work, but it was better. So I reburnt it so I could get it a bit darker. I thought it was just too light, it looked too uneven. So I went back around with my uh, weed burner and uh, just burnt it all back so I could sand it all back. And here is a disaster. The inside of my weed burner literally melted and went everywhere. The closest thing I had to me was a monster can that I was drinking. So I just poured it on to try and get it to solidify so I could chip it off the table. I was panicking. I mean, look at the, the dent it left in my table. I was absolutely mortified. I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, look at it, it just, I think it was either tin or zinc or something. I don't know why they'd have a torch that melts on the inside, but it just melted and it all dripped on the table. And I just sat there staring at it because I knew how much work I was going to have to do. And I was just really discouraged, just staring at the table, like, what the hell am I going to do? Right. 
look at all of it. It, like, it just melted on the inside. Like, how is that even possible? It's a torch. It's meant to be burning. But I bowed to the inevitable, and uh, I refinished the table. And at this point, I thought, oh, my God. And now my sander's broken. But I remembered I didn't plug it in at the wall. So I quickly went and plugged it back in, trying to get out of my little paddy. And I sanded it all the way back down. Now, it burnt, like, three or four millimeters into the table so this took absolutely forever to sand and obviously i had the legs on already so i couldn't just run it back through the planer and it's too wide to go through my planer anyway so i just had to sit there for a good probably two hours and just sand and sand and sand with 40 grit just trying to get it down and down and you can see that i already sanded quite a lot of the table off like you can actually see the wood starting to come back and look like actual wood again instead of burnt wood and it was still there. And I was so worried I was going to have to scrap this table. But I just kept sanding and kept sanding. And it started looking better. So I was getting some hope. But you can see there we're all the way back just to pure wood now. So it needs to be reburned, refinished, the whole the whole shabam. And uh, this is the third time I've had to finish the table now. But you can see I'm absolutely covered in sawdust. And uh, some of these cracks came up because when you burn the table sometimes cracks come up i usually leave them there because i like the look of them but i thought why don't i enhance these cracks and add a bit of that uh, charcoal and super glue so it you know it's almost like an epoxy finish and uh, when you run your finger over it it will be sm it will be smooth so i quickly added these in i thought it, it would be a nice touch even though when i burn it the cracks are probably going to get a bit wider anyway but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what other people feel about cracks. I like the look of the cracks. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you're the same. I, I think it's a really nice rustic look. Uh, the table is still structurally sound. It, it's still strong. I can stand on it. I can do everything. It's going to serve its purpose really well. But I don't know. It, it adds a nice little rustic look with the burn. I pulled all the melted parts out because I was curious to see if the torch would still work. And uh, it worked. And not only did it work, it worked a thousand times better. It burned a lot hotter, so I would spend less time on the wood, meaning I'm only burning the very, very surface of the wood instead of going deep down and heating the actual wood up. So as you can see, I was very happy with the result and uh, quickly sanded it and finished it back up. So if I, if, if I can have one bit of advice for you, if you buy one of these cheap little weed burners, take the middle part out. It's only there to hold the sparker in place. And as long as you light it every time with a... A lighter instead of using the spark honestly it would be so much better and i noticed here some of that i don't even know how i let slip past my radar i don't know if i sanded down and then it suddenly revealed itself I, I don't know where but two little dots like holes showed up in the table and i was so confused because i was like how the hell did i miss them but i filled them back in with a uh, you guessed it charcoal and super glue Quickly burnt it with a lighter, this time leaving my face away from the wood so I wouldn't cry again. And uh, sanded it all back and was getting it all ready for finish. And uh, at this rate, I was so, so happy that I managed to salvage this project and that I actually put the work in to fix, fix it instead of just sort of leaving it there. But, uh, you know, these things come up. You do have bad days and things happen. So, you, but you've just got to pursue and try to fix all your mistakes and uh, you'll show up with a really nice product and here I am finishing the table for the last time I promise <laughs> this is the last time I have to finish this table but you can see it's a lot darker and a lot nicer I reckon and oh, just look at that look at the wood just pop out straight out of the table it looks so nice I think like this is one of my best finishes so far I think and I'm a really big fan of this wood burn finish uh, I've done it on nearly every single one of my tables. The only downside to this finish, which I don't even think is a downside, is that the table does become very slightly rippled. It's more of a texture than an actual problem. Uh, it's not enough to knock over a drink or anything like that. But you're burning away the softer grain and leaving the harder grain behind, so it is slightly textured. But just look how this table came out. I am so thrilled with how it looks. It is the cleanest, smartest table I've made so far. I, I think it was a great decision to do the legs I did and it it's just beautiful. I love it. it it's elegant, it's smart, it's rustic, it's modern. It, it, it just looks so nice, in my opinion anyway. So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, 
I forgot to leave enough room to record an outro, so I'm just doing it on my phone now. So I'm sorry if the audio sounds a bit different. Uh, I don't even know why this is here. Uh, but anything I can do better uh, editing, recording wise, please let me know down in the comments. Anything nice or negative you got to say, please leave down in the comments. I I'd love to hear it all. Uh, I want my little businesses to succeed. Uh, I I'd really love to grow this YouTube channel so I'd have more of an audience for, you know, me projects and stuff. Uh, I really love doing this and I really want to get better at it. So anything at all you've got to say, I'd love to hear it. And uh, subscribe, join the journey. Uh, you know, I'm in the very beginning of my woodworking career right now and... Uh, I'd love to see where I am in a few years, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, follow along, and please, <laughs> I need your advice, let me know everything you have to know, uh, yeah, floor's open, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the project, and uh, I hope you stick around, so see you later.